How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the review for Survivor Series on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are a Canadian-based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses about the WWE and No Holds Barred on anything we say, pun intended. You can follow the podcast on Twitter, join in the conversation and by tweeting at No Holds Barred WP, as well as follow and listen to all previous episodes of the podcast on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher, and Spreaker. We are everywhere for your listening enjoyment and wherever is easier and convenient for you to listen to us. I'm your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. And here doing the review on my own today, I'm without my co-host, Corporate Cappy. He's back in school. So I'll be doing the review alone for you guys. Um, I would review TakeOver Toronto as uh, me and Corporate Cappy did go to both events uh, as in TakeOver and Survivor Series this weekend. Hell of a weekend. Definitely something I remember for the rest of my life. And uh, as you'll see, we're going to have a vlog out. It should be either out right now at the same time doing this podcast or it should be out a little bit after. So if it's out a little bit after, stay tuned for that. But I don't think I need to do a takeover review just solely because it was awesome from start to finish, as you guys seen. Or if you haven't seen, I tr- I just... I can't believe if you haven't seen TakeOver Toronto, go back and see, especially the Gargano and Champa match or Champa. That was match of the night for sure. They stole the show. Um, definitely going to be one of the matches of the year for NXT 100%. Um, I guess some of the things I can take away from TakeOver. Uh, if you guys do remember, in the middle of the Ty Dillinger and Bobby Roode match, there was a Fix the Apron chant. I'm telling you right now, you can believe me or you don't, you can choose not to believe us. Corporate Cappy started that chant up in our section, the 300s. It caught on with our entire section and eventually most of the arena was chanting. I went back and looked at it up on the network and you can hear it clearly. That's because the apron that wasn't facing the TV side fell down and we were just being goons. Yeah. A lot of people gave it flack for like taking it away from the match but you know it it was just an experience we were goons you know it's gonna happen it was awesome i loved how the arena joined in too whatever and the best part about that was they had a a ring crew go underneath the ring and hold the apron up the entire match until the end because i seen him come out after the match i'm like wow that is like dedication right that's why WWE has the best ring crew in the world when you see shit like that happen that's just incredible i couldn't believe it speaking of dillinger and rude ty dillinger If he wasn't already over enough from this weekend, he is extremely over now. Not even in the the rude Ty Dillinger match, but throughout the night, every time there was uh, people outside the ring, and the referee had to do a count, or if two people were lying on the mat in the middle of the ring, you know how the referee does his 10 count? Every count, the crowd would say 10. It was unreal, and they, they did it for Survivor Series 2. That's how over Ty Dillinger is. And I know people are going to say, oh, it's because it's Canada. He's He lives there. He's basically an hour. He lived. He born an hour away from Toronto. So you know what? Still, if he wasn't over enough, this definitely sent him over the top. And that match was unreal. Dillinger rude. Uh, again, Gargano and Champa put up match of the night with the Revival. Seeing Mickey James wrestle again was awesome, even though we knew what was going to happen. Um the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic match was okay. I mean, it was all right. The Authors of Pain won, whatever. Um, I love the TM61 spot with that uh, stanchion. That was pretty cool. And the big shocker of the night was when Samoa Joe won. I really thought Nakamura was going to retain. Um, that's nuts how now Samoa Joe is the first ever two-time NXT champion. Um, so good on Joe. And basically sent the crowd home happy. That was the most shocking ending I've ever seen. It was awesome. Takeover is well done from start to finish, as I said. So let's get into the Survivor Series review. Um, me and Corporate Cappy missed the first pre-show uh, that it was a cruiserweight match because uh, we were getting food. I mean, we were freaking starving. Um, we didn't go to that Korean grill house, as you'll see in the in the vlog beforehand for Survivor Series. So we went and got some popcorn at the stand. You know, the lines are long, whatever. So we missed that cruiserweight match. We got there in time to see Luke Harper and Kane. And just get, Kane's pyro off the stage scared the crap out of us because at that time that Kane's pyro on the stage went off. If you guys haven't seen Kane's entrance live, it's loud as hell. Like, it's fucking loud. 
Um, me and Cappy were just just about to sit down our seats, and it went off, and I almost dropped my popcorn everywhere. I it scared the living shit out of me, um, but it was awesome. Uh, I guess I don't know if I can say it was awesome. Luke Harper versus Kane, whatever. It's definitely pre-show material. Uh, Kane ends up winning anyways, and we get the corner pyro too. That was pretty cool. Definitely could feel the heat from anywhere in that arena. It's awesome. So we get into the main card. They started out with the women's elimination match. I didn't think that was going to be opening the show, so that was interesting. Um, Nia Jax looked dominant throughout that entire match. Unreal. That that chick just <laughs> barreling over everyone. Like the, the <laughs> I would say uh, with a bunch of goons in the crowd, the wall of Nia Jax. <laughs> It's just, it was crazy. I couldn't believe how dominant she looked. Um, the crowd was really behind Sasha, though, throughout this entire match. Uh, from what I was hearing, I don't know what they did. On, I don't know what you could hear on TV, but a lot of Sasha chants. Um, sh- shocking eliminations in this match between for Sasha Banks and Alexa Bliss. I know Corporate Cappy wasn't up, uh, too happy. Go take a look at his reaction in the vlog. Um, I didn't think that they were. I thought for sure they would be in the last two. Um, Beforehand of the match, it showed Nikki Bella's entrance, and we were wondering why it was taking so long for her to come out. Then they showed backstage, uh, Nikki Bella got hurt, and it's obviously going to be Natty because Natty was right there, and uh, Natty gets replaced, or Natty replaces Nikki Bella. She got a huge pop. Obviously, she's from Canada, so she got a huge ovation. Raw ends up winning this elimination match with uh, Bailey winning. Uh, I'm pretty sure she pinned Becky Lynch, from what I remember. Um, so yeah, uh, it's going to be pretty crazy. Uh, to see what happens after it, because after the match, Charlotte and Bailey, or Charlotte attacked Bailey. I'm guessing this is setting up their feud, and I hope it is for the women's title, because my girl Bailey definitely deserves a shot now. So yeah, Raw up 1-0 after that. Getting on the second match, The Miz versus Sami Zayn for the Intercontinental Championship. Really good match, although I would have loved to seen Ziggler versus Zayn. That would have been epic, but uh, this match was all right for what we got. Um. It could have gone either way. I really wasn't sure uh, who was going to win this match, but I understood how it could go either way if Zayn won and if Miz won. Um, I was going for Sami Zayn the entire time, so it was Corporate Cappy. And, of course, we were going to get some sort of interference from Maurice. It was going to happen, and we end up getting this basically like a screw job. She rings the... She rings the bell as uh, Miz is uh, in a submission movie. You know, he's not tapping. Sammy getting confused. And then uh, Miz with the roll-up holding the tights for the win. Um, so Miz retains. Icy title stays on SmackDown. I'm happy with that too. But I guarantee you Sami Zayn will be coming over to SmackDown eventually. We'll see what happens this week on Raw and SmackDown. We'll move on to the tag team elimination match. Enzo and Cass uh, were definitely over. Uh, in their entrance here, um, definitely uh, did some good promo work uh, mentioning Drake and uh, how Enzo's uh, robe or I guess robe uh, overalls were the cover of Drake's album. Um, New Day with a good promo as well. As always, they're really, really over no matter where they go. Um, this match ended up being really good. I loved it. Everything they did. There are a lot of good spots. Shocking elimination by the New Day being the first Raw team out. That was crazy. A lot of people in my section were going nuts when that happened. I couldn't believe it. Um, the last two teams end up being Cesaro and Sheamus versus the Usos, something I would have never have guessed. Um, but good for the Usos. Um, I love the the new heel Usos. They're pretty good. Uh, I love the way they're booking them now. Um, I love the ending, too, throughout the entire ending. I loved it. Raw ends up winning again, so now Raw's up 2-0. At this point, I'm going, my God, like, SmackDown's just getting buried. Like, they, they basically got buried this entire pay-per-view. The SmackDown just, ugh, obviously Vince getting in here and going, oh, we got to make Raw the flagship show. It's got to stay flagship. It's got to be dominant. Yeah, whatever, Vince. Um, so move on. To the Cruiserweight title match, Brian, the Brian Kendrick versus Kalisto for the Cruiserweight title. If Kalisto had a one, he would have brought the Cruiserweight title over to SmackDown, which we all thought that was going to happen. Um, but then I knew I read some some stuff out there that people said, oh, it's gonna, it doesn't matter if Kendrick wins too because the Cruiserweight's going over no matter what. The crowd was very dead, though. I don't know how it was on TV. Um, they weren't really into this match. The match wasn't really exciting itself. There's only one good spot where uh, Kalisto gave the C4 to Brian Kendrick to the outside. If you guys didn't see it, go back and look at it. It was pretty cool, really well done, looked clean to me. Um, Kendrick ends up winning. 
this match and retaining the Cruiserweight title, even though we know what the Cruiserweights are going to do. They're going over to 205 Live on the SmackDown. I mean, I don't know if it's considered to be on SmackDown because it's its own show after SmackDown. So I don't know. But we all know what's going to happen with the Cruiserweights. So Raw ends up winning this again. So because Kendrick represents Raw in this match. So Raw up 3-0. And I'm like, Jesus, Murphy. They, they could have at least had SmackDown win something in between. But already, like, Raw up 3-0. I'm like, it's over. Like, it, it's done. Because we get into now the men's elimination match. Which was unreal. And I thought I was I thought something was up when it lasted this long. I'm like, why is this lasting so long? I'm looking at the time going, man, there's so much time left. Is Goldberg and Lesnar gonna be forty five minutes? And we all know what happens in that. But the men's elimination match, unreal. Jericho was the most over out of everyone there, followed by AJ Styles, but Jericho got a massive pop. I hope it sounded the same on TV. It was just incredible how over he was. Cheryl Mack, crazy as ever. My God, man, that guy just puts it all on the line when he's out there. And uh, we find out that he does, does get hurt. Um, he first takes a table spot, which probably didn't help his inj- uh, the injury he has now. Um, does the uh, off the turnbuckle spot onto the table, which was pretty cool to see live. Um, then we get the Shane trying to do coast to coast and getting speared out of fucking nowhere by Roman Reigns. And Shane was basically knocked out because it was supposed, I found out it was supposed to be a pin right there, but because Shane was so out of it, his arm was sticking up and the ref had to improvise and basically said Shane was unable to continue. So it was crazy. Um, I found out that Shane was injured and I saw the one spot in the match where Randy Orton went and told his family that he'd be okay. And I'm uh, finding out today that Shane is okay, but uh, he took a pretty bad spot there. So he's probably still shaking up from that. I love the point of the match in the Shield reunion. The crowd went nuts about that. Um, there was a couple Roman Reigns fans in our section, and they're chirping us for booing Roman Reigns. Like chirping, I guess the arena because we were all booing Roman. Um, but as soon as the Shield was starting to reunite at that one spot in the match, they're like, "Oh, now nah, y'all cheering for Roman Reigns." Yup, yup. Oh, it was great. I just the, being in that wrestling atmosphere, like at an event, and being with the the fans is is completely different than talking about it. Uh, with someone in real life, you, it, being at an event is just—it's totally different feeling, and it, the atmosphere is just incredible. I love—I love it. It's uh, definitely another world. Um, but yeah, the Shield reunion, loved it. Loved the Shield power bomb. Uh, unfortunately, it was to AJ Styles, but whatever. Uh, it was a good spot in the match. Um, unreal ending with the Wyatts and Orton looking strong as ever, and we had the return uh, return of Luke Harper into the match. Um, so SmackDown winning that match. And, you know, it's it's all over anyways. They Basically, it's 3-1 if you look at the Survivor Series score. But good for SmackDown winning that match. Um, a lot of crowd, or a lot of the crowd were chanting for Undertaker to come out. I don't think he would have. I don't think there's really a good spot in the match for him to come out. And I'm actually happy that he didn't, whatever. It saved it from an already unreal match. So we get into the main event of the evening, Goldberg versus Lesnar. Um, this is the most hype rematch i've ever seen they put so much in this it was on the cover of the chairs the posters i thought this was going to be an epic match i'm looking at my phone going my god there's still like 40 minutes in the show left this is going to be crazy match i was so pumped for this i was expecting blood and just absolute carnage everywhere nope nope we get a goldberg squash match I'm like, what? I lost, me and Cor- Corporate Cappy lost our fucking minds, and so did everyone else. One minute and 23 seconds into the match, after two spears and a jackhammer, Goldberg beats Lesnar. Lesnar didn't even get one move, and he carried him to the turnbuckle, and Goldberg pushed him back. The match was shorter than Goldberg's entrance. <laughs> wow. I was in such disbelief. I had so many emotions running through my fucking head. Like, I didn't know what to think. It was uh, up and down. I'm like, going. I'm, everyone around me was just completely shocked. Mouths wide open. Just, it was an, an incredible sight. Um, eventually, I was really angry due to the pay view ending 30 minutes uh, early. And I'm going, what the fuck? We just paid for only three hours and a half. And we should have gotten four hours. And there was no big fight after all that anticipation. I was really angry. I eventually found out that Goldberg was injured. So I guess he had an injured shoulder before this match. And it was the reasoning for the quick match. And then I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. So then Gold- this is not Goldberg's last match. He's definitely going to come back. I also found out that he will be in the Royal Rumble. I don't know if that's all but confirmed. But I'm hearing a lot of reports. And I'm reading a lot, like maybe 90% of the people online saying that Goldberg is in the Royal Rumble match. So that'll be cool to see him there. Um... 
So yeah, that brings up the question, will Goldberg ever wrestle again and against who? So we know if it could be in the Royal Rumble. Will he have another match after that? Will that set up a WrestleMania feud? I know, I guarantee you deep down, he wants his son to at least watch him at WrestleMania. I know he's just seen him wrestle, but you can't even call that a wrestling match. Um, I don't know what the fuck that was. Uh, a squash? I guess you can call it a squash match. I don't even know <laughs> what else to call it. But I think his son would really want him to see him, uh, his dad wrestle uh, at WrestleMania against someone huge. Maybe I see a lot of people saying it could be Undertaker. I don't know if I want that to happen. I want John Cena to face the Undertaker. I think Goldberg maybe versus Roman Reigns as much as I hate Roman Reigns. Or maybe Goldberg versus Samoa Joe. Someone, someone big, someone that would uh, create an epic match for Goldberg. Um, I can see it probably being Roman Reigns. That'd be interesting. But uh, yeah, I see Goldberg not done yet. Uh, as much as he said that he uh, Brock Lesnar was last. Um, who knows? Uh pfft. We'll have to see. Uh, after he brought his son in the ring, his son took his shirt off to flex around like uh, his, his dad Goldberg, which is pretty cool. And then like it was nuts. I mean, after like the crowd was just so shocked when uh, when JoJo announced that uh, the show was over, and then uh, we'll see you tomorrow for Raw. The crowd really, really lost it. Like, I mean, me and Corporate Cappy were outside. Some guy was like pushing barricades down. He was pissed. But um, I look at it as like you know what. If Goldberg was actually that injured, I knew it, it is all right. I mean, they could have maybe had another match in between. Uh, you has left, you had people left off the card like Baron Corbin. I know he had the little spot with Kalisto. Um, you had people like Dolph Ziggler who were in that Survivor Series. You had other people laying around that they could have done like a quick 10, 15 minute match to make uh, the Goldberg Lesnar match seem a little bit closer to 11 o'clock than how far back it was. Um, so yeah, I'm not I'm not sure what uh what to take out of that. Um again, I think Lesnar is not well, I'm not Lesnar. Uh Goldberg's not done yet. It'd be interesting to see what they do with uh uh I guess with Goldberg at the Royal Rumble. I don't know if he'd be an early entrant or a late entrant. I hope he's not number thirty. That'd be way too fucking obvious, so we'll see what happens with that. Um other than that, guys, let's get into your tweets out there, because that was the review. I actually you know I'll give it a rating. Takeover, obviously, I'm giving it 9.5 out of 10. Incredible. Uh, I just a biased opinion, but I think a lot of people would agree with me, just solely based on Gargano and Champa uh, putting up an unreal match. Uh, Survivor Series, I'd give it a solid 8 out of 10. Uh, I think that's all right. Rating uh, the two. The minus two score from the Big Ten would be the Goldberg short ending, but you know we had no reasoning behind that, and uh, they could have done something better with the Miz and uh, Sami Zayn. So let's get into your tweets out there, and we'll start off with Glorious Greg. He puts pretty awesome show. Love to see the Shield reunion. I'm glad Goldberg beat Brock. I'm kind of disappointed Kalisto didn't win the Cruiserweight title. I have to agree with that. Uh, Kalisto not winning the Cruiserweight title. Uh, I think that definitely could have done something for his career and definitely could have boosted him in the Cruiserweight division. So I agree with you there, Greg. Uh, next set of tweets, Gamma at Gamma NU1. But thought it was cool all around. Glad to see Goldberg squash Lesnar. Seemed to be in the minority with that. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm still on the fence about it, uh, Gamma. But you know what? I know where you're coming from. He also puts, I read something earlier that said Lesnar wanted to be squashed because he saw money in feud. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Well, that'll be, we'll see what happens with that. I mean, I don't know. You, this, it all depends on where this goes from here. Um, uh, I, I really can't say what's going to happen. Uh, I guess I'm going to have to wait for Raw and SmackDown this week to have an idea. Uh, next set of tweets come from that guy, Greg, at Greg Messi on Twitter. He puts, I thought it was really good. A lot of botched moments, but really good. Uh, Shane taking risks, as always. This one may cost him. He wasn't meant to go out like that. Yeah, I definitely agree. Poor Shane. Uh, Matt, that spot was incredible, and that match is incredible. New Day look weak. Hate to say, yep. And them going eliminated first was just crazy. I couldn't believe that they are the first team eliminated from Raw. Um, so, yeah, I see how the New Day look weak here. Uh, he puts Goldberg one in under two minutes. Didn't see that coming. Hopefully that builds in something as he is going to be at the Rumble. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I, I don't know what's going to happen here. Again, like he could be in the beginning of the Rumble. It could be number 30, which I really hope not. It's going to be interesting to see what they do with Bill Goldberg from now on. Next set of tweets, at Chuck, Wils Chuck Wilson, at C. Wilson, 3124 on Twitter. Good overall, bad booking with the tag teams, though. American Alpha should have been showcased, uh, missed opportunity. Yes, I definitely agree. American Alphas are my boys, too. I think they could have done something better with them. Um, but we also had uh, 
Greg Messi chime in, although the Usos look pretty good in the match as heels. Um, yes, and I agree with uh, Chuck Wilson, too. He said they are great workers. They are excellent workers. I love them as heels. Me and Cobra Cappy love these guys as heels, so it, they definitely did a good job with showcasing them and uh, boosting them as the heels uh, for the SmackDown Tag Team Division. So, you know, you can see it from uh, both sides of the fence there as well. Last set of tweets comes from Michael Chow, out real Michael Chow. He puts thought I thought Survivor Series was good, seven out of ten, but hope they don't go hope they don't do it every year, then it would be just plain bragging rights. You know what? Uh yes and no. Um I I love the the, the brand warfare. Um I mean, it's I guess you, you have to wait and slowly base it on if they're gonna do a draft every year or two. We don't know what's gonna happen. Um so I guess we just got to wait and see what happens. I mean they're already gonna sell travel packages for Survivor Series in December. So it's gonna be interesting to see like how big it's gonna be next year. So yeah, I kinda agree with you on that, Michael Chow. He puts pros, Goldberg takes Lesnar to Jobber City. <laughs> Love it. And then Roman Reigns gets booed louder than Montreal. Screw job. Oh, my God. That is so true. He got – I don't know if it was loud for you guys on TV. It was so loud in that arena with the boos. My Lord, man. <laughs> His boos just get louder and louder. Um, he put cons. Two paws lays out Mickey Pella. <laughs> God, Sasha, New Day, Brazongo, and Lesnar go for the earliest elimination award. <laughs> oh, that'd be a slammy. Lesnar wins. Oh, man. Yeah, Lesnar wins with the early elimination. <laughs> Survivor Series. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. Um, yeah. He puts question. TLC is coming up. Favorite TLC match ever. Mine is HBK versus Triple H in a three stages of hell match. <sighs> You know what? You, you look at all the TLC matches from the past. Oh, man. Like, it's, it's a couple of them run through my head uh, there, Michael Chow. One was uh, when CM Punk faced Jeff Hardy. And then after the match, The Undertaker appeared in Jeff Hardy's place. And then just that was incredible. I'll always remember that moment. I'm a huge CM Punk Undertaker guy. Um, I guess my favorite TLC match ever, not at the TLC. It wouldn't be at a TLC pay-per-view. It was back again, WrestleMania 17, the triple threat tag team match, the Dudleys, the Hardys, Edge and Christian. That match was epic. I always go back and watch it. One of the most epic TLC matches of all time. So, yeah, I guess those would be my favorite. Um, I'll get my, we'll get our favorites for Cobra Cappy in a lowdown show this week, I guess. Um, I don't know what uh, his would be. <laughs> There's a lot for Cobra Cappy. I can't really speak on his behalf. He also puts, and lastly, what was your favorite moment to see live at Survivor Series? I'm guessing Shane table spot or spear spot. You know what? Out of that entire Survivor Series being there live, uh, it's tough. I mean, I think it was just seeing Chris Jericho in and being involved in the ovation he got. Um, I'd say seeing stuff live, though, yeah, it would definitely be Shane uh, his table spot and the spear spot. That was incredible. Our section went nuts. Me and Corporate Cappy went nuts. And I think just seeing Brock Lesnar get squashed. Like, I, w I didn't see that coming. That was nuts. I marked out huge. Um, just being there live, though, was was amazing. My favorite moment was the, like, the entire pay-per-view Michael Chow. Like, it was being there so much different than watching on TV, obviously. But it was such an experience. And I'm definitely going to do it next time it comes nearby. Whether it's Toronto or Buffalo or somewhere nearby, I want to go experience something like that again. And uh, hopefully do another vlog for you guys out there as well. Other than that... I think that's going to do it for the review, guys, this week. Um, tune in for the Lowdown Show later this week as well. And check out our vlog from this weekend uh, for NXT TakeOver Toronto and Survivor Series. It was an incredible weekend for me and Corporate Cappy, one we're always going to remember. And that's going to do it for the Survivor Series review on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are a Canadian-based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses about the WWE and No Holds Barred on anything we do or anything we say, pun intended. Remember, you can follow the podcast on Twitter and join in the conversation by tweeting at WP, as well as follow and listen to all previous episodes of the podcast or the vlog on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher, and Spreaker. As always, I'm your self-looking greatest host, Kyle Masters, guys. See you next time. <laughs>